joining me now on the next Phil School podcast in a special earth shattering crossover event to end all crossovers. The multiverses are colliding. They are exploding. We're all going to die, according to Craig, at least. Um, it is a hard next life on today's episode of the next film school podcast. Let's see. Who should I, who should I go, go age order? Who's the oldest of you three? Craig. I don't know. That's a good question. Who is the oldest? Craig, you, how old are you? you are. We're, we're, this is how we're doing the intros. Craig, how old are you? I don't want to talk about that. Really? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, Wendy, I mean, how old Macri, are you? we all. We're all 44. We all, all are the same race. number. You'd have to go to the months and days to figure this out. <laughs> so then as long as you're all older than me, that's what matters. Um, <laughs> I'll do it in unison. Blandy, Craig, and of course, Barry of Hard Next Life. Hello, sirs. How are you all doing? Craig, doing good. answer first. It's awesome to be here, man. You know, <laughs> is it really? this is like, I feel like we're on David Letterman right now. Oh, it's high praise. The biggest pod in the Knicks verse, man. And, and and we had to, Claudio was telling us that you like to be last when, whenever you're having guests. So we came in <laughs> one at a time and then you came in. And he gave us the whole pre-pod Macri routine. Yeah. Grapes. He said your wife was feeding you grapes. Spritzing. Show. Your face Spritzes. was being spritzed. By what, your is, wife too? what is makeup, being makeup trailer? Yeah. Uh, you can ask Blandy, actually, because we found out on our last oh, show geez. that Blandy uses a pineapple spritz soap. It's not a spritz. Wash. It's a scrub. I love the word already transforming manly. into <laughs> our next life. By Wait, no, hold on. We're changing, your, we're I... changing your whole show right now. Oh, yeah, Macri, by <laughs> the way, I mean, you should know this. Nobody derails a podcast like Hard Next Life does. So <laughs> no, I derail my own Grace podcasts yourself. routinely, which I enjoy doing. It's my favorite thing to do. Um, so we're, we're going to get into our bit. Well, I mean, we've already done a bit, but we'll do some more bits, I'm sure. We're going to get into our bit here in a bit. Our bit is going to be, how should I phrase this? Who came up with this bit? Barry, you, Barry. you introduced the bit because it's your you came up with the bit. So you should introduce yeah. the bit. So we're going to each present and we'll probably do a couple of them. We're going to each present like an I would be surprised most if this happens. And it's going to be multiple choice. They'll probably be related to you know one another in the same thing of three or four choices to choose from. But it's basically what what would surprise you the most if this were to happen? And we'll and- present that to each other. Yes, but because we must have some modicum, some 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 kind of decorum on the show, the three, the three choices or four choices, or whatever it is, will all relate to the same topic or player or right. Yes, yes. Okay. So they're not totally yeah. random. Okay, and I'm I'm sure I said this in the intro already, but this will be the first half, of the two part show, and the second half is going to run on your guys' podcast feed. And I will reemphasize in case I did not do an apt job of this already on the introduction. If you are listening to this and you are not subscribed to Hard Next Life podcast, what are you doing with your life? And the YouTube channel. Sorry, that's Andrew telling me in the well, chat here. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people are not subscribed to this YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> but it is what it is. <laughs> well, of course, there are going to be more people on, on the earth yes. not subscribed than are <laughs> subscribed. You should not take yeah. offense to that. You should definitely listen. We're um, like the emotional version of a Knicks podcast. Totally emotion. No research. That's that's what, what I like to say. What are we? Technocrats? We take all emotion out of it? That's, that's No, you've I'm got insulting. a lot of emotion, but uh, you know, you, you think about things. We just let it go. I do, I do <laughs> use, I use my brain on occasion. Um Blandy, I, why don't you why don't you tell Macri your um first hack at the multiple choice question? Excuse that me. That you sent me last night. No, no. No. The one, yeah, start yeah, yeah. It doesn't off, matter. Buddy. This is just I, we're gonna. It's no, an example of it one. It's an example. But that was just the beginning. No, that was when I had just talked to Barry about what I was supposed to be doing. So let's relax. You don't need to try and embarrass me. Five minutes in here. Okay. Just let's just relax. All right. Can, can Craig embarrass you? Yeah, sure. He'll try. Go for no, it. don't Randy really. texted me. Said no because I use something like that. So don't use that. <laughs> Come on, what when are you, you doing? Something here? like that? It's terrible. Really? You know what you are? You know what you are? I'd be most KP surprised. Ness. That's what you are. I'd be most surprised if Julius if A Julius oh, yeah. Blanderson, Randall leads Blanderson the team brought in the his drops. Drops. That's be what you are. He brought his drops with him. This is this is <laughs> wow. I'm not used to this. 
<laughs> oh, that's me. Ooh, I recognize that. That's me. Oh, Blandy. That's you. How is... weird is that? I'm, should I be honored or scared? <laughs> scared. Yeah. Okay. Oh, man. Um, all right. You're not going to blow up Blandy's spot? I was trying to, but everyone was talking. No, so. please don't. Just let's. I'd just... be most surprised. No. <laughs> this is from Blandy. He put a lot of thought uh, into this. We're talking. Not, uh, finish reading it. He told me he spent about four hours thinking about That's this. Not okay. even the least bit true. I'd be most surprised if A, Julius Randle leads the team in assists. B, Jalen Brunson leads the team in assists. And he sent that and I was like, holy shit, this episode's going to suck if that's what they're like. I was the beginning. <laughs> I told you I needed more. <laughs> but you spent I have four hours through thinking it. about that. He worked through it. So I, I feel comfortable after that little Jeez, side crazy. drive. I, I, I would like to... <laughs> I think we should start with Blandy. I think Blandy should go first. I agree. Okay. Fine. Barry, you okay with that? Yeah. Barry's, Barry's nodding. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. So, Blandy, right. why don't you start us off and read your question with your multiple choices? So, I wanted to go with something that people talk about all the time. Um, and so, mine is, I would be surprised most if Mitchell Robinson, A, attempted a three-pointer this year. B made a three pointer this year. Oh. Or C took literally one shot outside of the paint all year. Don't you think That's A and question. B What's what's A again? I mean, I'd I be most surprised attempted, if he took a three. Attempted a three, made, or a, made three, a three, or literally took one shot outside of the paint all year long. <laughs> They're it, all like <laughs> It's it's a poor question, but Excuse me. I love you. Fuck off. Uh, I mean, you got to go B. Start. I mean, I'll start with with my choice. Would is be it B? It, my is choice B. would also be B. Craig, what's your choice? I mean, come on, you'd have to be an idiot not to select B here. He's got. If you'd be more surprised if he took a shot and missed than if he took a shot and made it. <laughs> but but took literally one shot outside of. Did he take a shot outside of the paint last year? I don't think he did. He, wow, I literally worse, don't think that he that did. That was honestly worse than the example. Uh, I, I actually was really. going to say that. I think the example was a better question. Could we go back to the example? I don't think he took a shot outside of the paint all year long last year. He, 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 he definitely has taken a shot outside of the paint, but I can't recall if it was last season or two years ago um, <laughs> that it was done. I think it was but, two years ago, but do, you do know the three pointers are not in the paint. They are. Like, I know. I know. Okay, okay. It's a poorly constructed question. We've been teased three, with the three pointer for this. how many I'm gonna, years? I'm going so to get us. I'm going to get us out Barry, of this doghouse. Can you, can you oh, get us on track question. here, please? Here we right. go. So there were a lot of names that were floating around during the Donovan Mitchell trade talks. And there's a few guys on this team where there's either not a rotation spot for, or just has a questionable fit with where the Knicks are right now. So fill in the blank. I would be most surprised if blank was still on the Knicks roster after the trade deadline. Evan Fournier, Derek Rose, Cam Reddish, or Julius Randle. And we're going to keep this only to players. So, t- so Thibodeau should not be. As much as you can't wait to get rid of Tom Thibodeau. <laughs> I'm a Mr. Thibodeau. He's not on the table. It's players only. One, players only. This is a good question. I like this question. See that, Brandy? Uh, that's how you write a question. Fuck off. Thanks, Craig. Uh, hmm. Who, who wants? Yeah, uh, Craig, you want to go? F- uh, we should go in uh, the This is order. so hard. I, Craig, I think you we should go, go with first. Blandy first. Blandy? Okay. Uh, Blandy, okay. go first. <sighs> I say Cam Reddish. I just don't see, I don't see what he's doing here. I don't see a plan for him. I don't see a way for him to get into the rotation. I, I just don't see him being here. Easiest to trade, probably. Certainly Rose. makes the least amount of money. He makes about yeah. a third as much as Rose and about mm-hmm. a, a quarter as much as, as Fournier. I, he's, he's younger, you know? I mean, he's still got some upside. Maybe another team thinks that they could, they could you know, turn him around. Right. You also got to think, though, as you approach the trade deadline, is there going to be a team that maybe had a player go down that is heading into the playoffs that needs a veteran, that needs somebody that they get that they know what they're going to get, like a Fournier or like a Rose, who may be ready to move out of here too, and they, they don't want to be in New York anymore. You know, there's that angle to think about as well. Here's the thing about Rose, though. The Knicks will not trade Derrick Rose until it, if, and this may not happen, until they are out of the 
they feel that they are out of the play in race. I don't believe that they will do that as much as many people may feel like they should. And Fournier, I can see the move in Fournier, but only not just to like get rid of him. I don't think like if some team looks at him all of a sudden as like a neutral asset, I don't think they're just going to move him because they could move him. I think they're going to want, they're going to move him to try to improve their situation in some way. And that's a tough, I have a tough time seeing that happen before the deadline. I have to go with the obvious answer here too. I got to go with Cam. It's it's too, I, good question, but I think Cam is the obvious answer. Yeah, same for me. I'm going Cam Reddish. I mean, we know Tibbs loves Rose, right? Um, I don't know if he's ever going to give up on him. Also, you don't know if Rose is going to be healthy. So how easy is it going to be to trade him down the line if he's not? And Randall and Fournier, we, Fournier, we know those contract numbers. So and we know that Reddish maybe requested a trade already and there's not an obvious spot for him in the rotation and he's easy to move. So I would definitely go him. Yeah. And if we are keeping a score, that would have been my answer as well as Cam. Well, you have to answer your own question. I think that's yeah. fair. Oh, you don't? Do you? Craig, I want to hear your answer to your own question. No, I'd rather not answer my own question. Should I go next then? I, I think you it. should. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, what am I going to go with here? Got like seven to choose from. Uh, the Knicks front off. Uh, I'd be most surprised if the Knicks front office. A. These are long, so just bear with me. A. <laughs> Trades a similar package of picks and young players as reported in the Donovan Mitchell trade for a superstar during the season. B, trades Julius Randle and or Evan Fournier during the season to push the youth movement. C, fires Tom Thibodeau in season. D, holds an actual press conference for the press. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, does me, can I ask a clarifying question? Yeah. Actually, I don't know if this will change my answer. Does media, if, if, so someone from the front office has to get in front of a microphone and answer questions from the assembled media? Yes. And what, about, so, what, what about Monica McNutt? Like she's, an evening with Leon Rose, would that count? Chris? Yeah, as long as press is invited to it, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Right, what was the fun. third choice? Fires Tom Thibodeau? <laughs> yeah, basically, I'd be most surprised if the Knicks front office trades a package like it was talked about in the Donovan Mitchell deal for another superstar during the season, trades Julius Randle and or Fournier to push the youth movement. Oh, okay. C, and fires Tom Thibodeau. D, I, holds an actual press conference. I'll go first here. I think easily the, the least surprise I would be is if they fire Tom Thibodeau. I think firing Tom Thibodeau is in a is in a category of its own as far as likelihood among these three. Mm. And I think the easy answer to the question if we're playing the the most surprised by game, I'd be sh- they're not going to hold a press conference. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, and here's here's the cheat, uh, I, here's how I feel even more emboldened. The only way that they would hold a press conference is if they made a superstar trade. Mm-hmm. So that I feel even stronger saying I'd be most surprised if they hold press conference. Wow. Yeah, this is kind of tough. So I, th- I think A is very unlikely, but you never know what superstar that we're not thinking about is going to get disgruntled and is going to want out from wherever he is. And then the Knicks, you know, are going to find themselves wanting to get in the game. So it's certainly possible. <sighs> so for that reason, because for me, it was between A and B. You uh, think the whole as, as, as unlikely no. as unlikely that they would hold a press conference. When, when is when are they holding a press conference? Why would they hold? A press They're not holding. Well, them, does media day count? I, I no, that's why I asked no, that question, no, and then so. I thought to myself, they don't need to speak at media day. They didn't speak at media day last year. The Look, press. I know this invited. isn't. There's not I, an actual con- press conference at media day. <laughs> The players are required players. to speak and the coach is yeah. required to speak, I believe, by the letter of the law in the NBA. The front office is not required to speak because they didn't speak last year. I was obviously not considering media day in there because that right, so that's, that's out. Know that's that's, a, that's a, an aside thing. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a separate press conference. Right. I didn't and think anyone know, would pick that because I, I, you know, it you think like it's, it's more thing, likely you think about that they trade that they trade Julius Randle, then have a press conference. 
I think it's more likely that the yeah. Earth gets destroyed by a fucking meteor <laughs> than this front office no holds up press comments. They just aren't going to do it. Yeah, this is not it's, Steve Mills holding a press conference. Remember when they they like out of the gate, they, you know, had a, a really bad losing record. And then, you know, Steve Mills and Scott Perry came out, had a press conference to <laughs> they apologize and, and tell Knicks fans not to worry. That was That's a strange great. one. But again, that was a different <laughs> front office. Uh, but I'm still going to I'm going to go with B. The, something could happen where they have a press conference for one reason or another, um, wh- wh- which it could be, like you said, firing Thibodeau. And then, you know, they would have to have a, a press conference to, you know, welcome the new coach. That's a good I'm question. Go would, would they hold a press conference if they fired Tom? I think so. I think they would, too. But even then that. So then if they that then and, firing and Tom think, would be the. I think it would be partly in respect to Tom Thibodeau as well. Yeah. You know. That. So, yeah. OK. Not not to say that, that it was a, a no big deal and he's just another coach and we're bringing another coach in here. I think I think they have respect for him and that they're, you know, Rose and him are, are close enough. And I think the gravitas of that situation would warrant a press conference. I'm going to go B. I, I don't see them this season trading Randall and, you know, For, Fournier could happen. Um, but I don't think it's to go in the way of a youth movement. I think they want to be competitive and I think they're going to spend most of this season well into the season, even if they are, you know, falling down, you know, the ladder, they're still going to try to get back in there, especially now with the way the play-ins were. Um, so I don't think they're going to move to that direction. So I go with B. I'm going with the last one all the way. I don't see them having a, there you go. Smart a man. conference that, for anything. There's just, there's no way they don't talk and they don't give a shit. I'm they don't give a shit about talking. Barry on B. Yeah, they don't. They don't get. They don't care that we want them to talk. They don't care that we want. Do you want them of, to talk, Lady? I'd like to hear something from them. Some like, what yeah. they're thinking. Oh, I was going to say you want to hear something like a fart noise or one of your sound effects. <laughs> that would be good if Leon Rose got out there and he played <laughs> sound effects from your sound effects machine. That would be a great press conference. I would like that. Yeah, I I would I don't give a shit if they talk to the press or not. I could care less if they invite press, but yeah, I wouldn't mind hearing from them. You know, Got just it. hearing what they're what they're thinking going into this season. I feel like we I don't know, maybe you guys know better than us, but I don't know what direction they're going in. Um, whether they want to trade, whether they want to go with the youth movement or they want to win games or have no I, idea. I, on my list of concerns, it's it's down the list. I'll just say that. Yeah. I think it's I think the trading Randall and or Fournier versus a superstar trade. That's an that's an interesting because it's also possible that they trade Randall or Fournier in a trade for a superstar, which is, makes an additional complication to this question. Um, right, because the, the Mitchell, the Mitchell trade discussions were totally different um, in the way that something would probably go down midseason because Utah was actually, you know, going in that direction, obviously, of trying to get themselves in the shitter. They weren't trying to get back guys that were going to help them win. But well, if there's a disgruntled superstar on a competitive team, on a winning team, that team isn't going to want to throw away whatever they built. And they're going to try to get players back like a Randall or somebody that's going to be a net yeah, positive sure. for them. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. want Randall. Come on. <laughs> the, uh, the, the hypothetical they that we don't even know who we're talking about. Between, the t- between those two, who do you think is more likely to get traded, Randall or Fournier? Barry? I think ask ask me after twenty games into the season. No, I'm asking you, you right. You have to answer I, right I, now. I don't know what Randall we're going to get, and I think that they are still in Randall's corner. I think every one of them in that front office is still oh, in wow. Randall's corner. I, I don't see, I just don't see it that they would have given up on him, uh, even after that atrocious season. Now we don't know what went on in practice. We saw a couple of confrontations on the sidelines with him and certain coaches, and we saw his attitude all season long. So I don't know how how deep that runs and how many rifts maybe he caused with upper management. But I I, I have a hard time believing that that there are those rifts there. See, to me, I'm not even sure it matters if he gets such a like if he what makes it more likely that he gets traded? He starts off playing like an all-star or he starts off where he can't hit the far side of a bar. Because if he starts off playing great, it increases his trade value, but uh, they might want to hang on to him. And if he starts off terrible, then you'd think that they would want to move from that much more. But how much of a harder time are they going to? I That's why I think it's, a, it's quite the conundrum. I, I think it's more likely they move 48 during the season. By the way. As do I. 
Um, that was a good question. Um, wait, so who's up? Me? Am I up? Yeah, oh, you're yeah, up. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I got a couple. Okay. I think this is a pretty good one. Which Nick is most like, or you would be most surprised if the following Nick won most improved player? You'd be most surprised if RJ Barrett won most improved player, Emmanuel Quickly won most improved player, Quentin Grimes won most improved player, or Obi Toppin won most improved player. Got some deep faces of thought here. Hmm. Can, look, can I can I go first here? Yeah, go for it. I'm I'm gonna say I'd be most surprised if, if Barrett won most what? improved player. Yeah. Because I think he, at this point, I think the other three have a much larger jump that they can take than than he does at this point. In terms of, I mean, he just put up 20 points per game last year. So what kind of jump would he need to make in order to get that kind of love for that kind of award? I mean, the other three, you know, what a quickly average, a little over 10 Right, ten and eleven points. I mean, usually that's the kind of thing that they're looking at. So the Grimes and for and uh, and Toppin and quickly have a much larger possible jump to make, at least points per game wise, that I think people would would get people's attention. Um, I see where your mindset is, but the thing is, other people have won that award that have come from where RJ is now, and you know, you say you know the type of jump that he'd have to make, but. You know, look look at, you know, the jump that Randall made. And, and I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think RJ is going to be able to put up those numbers that Randall did two years ago. But I mean, Randall was averaging about 20, 20, 21 points a game, and he was able to get to most improved player. So for me, RJ is the easy throwaway answer to that question. Um, and just Can because, I tell you who agrees with you, Barry? Yes. Las Vegas. They RJ Barrett is currently the fourth highest odds for yeah. most improved winner at following Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, and another Nick who I didn't include because I thought he would be too easy to get rid of here. Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson has third best odds, plus 1,900. Barrett's at plus 2,300. Yeah. yeah so RJ Barrett's numbers, like, sure, you mentioned the 20 points a game, but according to the rest of the league, they were a horrible 20 points a game, you know? <laughs> and, no, and again, I mean, if you go even so from 20 down him. to 24, that's enough if you surround it with winning and then, you know, his efficiency numbers and, yep. you know, and, and all the other stats. So, yeah. Uh, so it comes down to quickly Toppin and Grimes. Grimes. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to eliminate quickly. Um, even though, you know, I don't think there's a shot in hell that he gets it either. Uh, I'm going to eliminate him. And then it comes down to Toppin and Grimes. Oh, I mean, you got to be on the court to win this award. So, I mean, for me, I would be most surprised if Hobie Toppin, Gets most. I mean, I, it, it, I'm equal. I would be equally surprised if Grimes, but I got to pick one. So, I'll go with Toppin. You know. Wow. Okay. I like. It. It, okay. So, Andy, you went with RJ. Barry, you're going Toppin. Craig, I'm curious to see where you go. Here. Uh, well, I really wish I could be original here, but <laughs> I can't. I mean, I go with Ob too, because um, we wouldn't be that lucky for Ob to get all those minutes. If he if Obi got most improved player, that means Randall has either his his uh, role on this team has been downgraded by Thibodeau or he's not here. Uh, I don't see Obi getting those minutes, and I could we could I think I could see uh, Emmanuel quickly getting significant minutes off the bench. You know, maybe buying for like six man one day would be the dream. You know, um, Quentin Grimes. We know Tibbs loves him. I'm just not convinced that Obi is going to get much playing time with Thibodeau. Unfortunately. So that would be, I don't see that happening. Yeah. Even though I, would, I have no I issue for it. if somebody said Grimes here, because again, I, I can't see that happening either. So a little bit of trivia, borrowing from an upcoming newsletter, seven of the last 10 players to win this award did so in a season in which they won their, or in which they made their first all-star team. So I would agree with Barry that I think RJ is by far the most likely to win the award because I could see RJ Barrett making his first all-star team far more than I could see any of the other three players making their first all-star team. I'm, I'm going to go in a different direction for my own answer to my, my question. I would be most surprised if Emmanuel quickly won this because I don't, I don't know that I see 
with Brunson on the team and with RJ on the team, I don't see a path for a big enough jump in minutes and or numbers for quickly to, to really get himself in there. Like to me, I know I get what you guys are saying on Obi, but like just for argument's sake, let's say like, let's say Randall went down with an injury or if Randall got traded or like, let's just say Tom Thibodeau found religion and started playing it together, whatever. Andrew shakes his head as, as is customary at this point, that should be a new drinking game. Um, if Obi Toppin got to some way, shape, or form, got to average 24, 26, 28 minutes a game, there's a, I think that's a really, that's a clean path. Similar thing with Grimes. I think there's a world where Grimes on this team plays like a really significant role. Like maybe he starts, maybe he starts and plays like 25, 30 minutes a game and puts up like decent numbers. I, I don't know. Quickly, I just I don't know what quickly would have to do to actually win the award. I, it would I would that would shock me the most. Don't you think you don't think that quickly is between Grimes, Obi, and quickly is most is is on Tim in Tim in Thibodeau's camp the most of the, those guys and is more guaranteed playing time because I do especially like at the end of the games you'd see him last season and i just yeah. feel like he's guaranteed to get minutes i do think it's no, more I think likely he's I, I think he's gonna get minutes but he got he averaged 20 what do you average 23 minutes a game last season so like what would the what would the leap have to like is there like again talk about like we don't wish injuries on anybody certainly don't wish injury on the next newest addition jalen brunson but like but let's say, even say that happened let's say brunson without an injury in game one like we know, we have enough evidence to say that they're not going to elevate quickly as a starting point guard job. Maybe they do this year, but they had a chance to do it last year, and they didn't take that chance. That's why I don't, I don't see the path for him to, to get that, to get that usage, get those shots, get those, get the numbers. I just, I don't know. I don't see it. He's put on all that muscle, though. See that muscle? I did see the muscle. I I'm did joking. see the muscle. It's, some photos, it looks like he did. Some he didn't. So, is there anyone else I should I'll put? Put a. Uh, would it? I'm curious. If you guys just said Toppin, would Toppin surprise you more than Cam? Sur- surprise as far as what? Winning this, winning most improved player. Because I believe actually Cam Reddish is listed in the odds as a potential. You could bet on Cam Reddish to win most improved player as a Talk Nick. About, I, his his name <laughs> is on. He has odds. I will look up. I can't find the site now. I'm sure, it's not a disclaimer <laughs> that it's got to be as a Nick. I'd be more surprised if Cam Reddish won it. Yeah. He has plus 25,000 odds. So you could, what is that? You could win 2,500 bucks if you bet a dollar, I think, or $250 if you bet a dollar. Yeah, maybe that's it. Um, Can I ask a follow up, John? Sure. So if your whole argument for Obi not being your least surprising is all it takes is Randall to go down with an injury. Um, the person playing in front of Emmanuel quickly for first man off the bench or first guard off the bench is Derek Rose. So why wouldn't that be his path? That Derek Rose gets hurt, quickly becomes your sixth man. And because he enters the sixth man of the year conversation, he also enters the most improved player conversation. So the last player in that mold to win this, I don't even really know if they're, because I said seven of the last 10 made their first all-star team. The three that did not make an all-star team in the year they won it with Pascal Siakam, who I get, I mean, that was a year the Raptors won the championship and he was like establishing himself as their third or fourth best player. So I don't know, maybe he came off the bench a little bit that season, but he, he was certainly more, more than a six man. And then the other two were CJ McCollum, who was like the Blazers second leading scorer, certainly not a six man. And then Goran Dragic, who made all NBA that season. So like I, Six men, usually six man level is not enough to win the award. The, this favorite, award. the favorite right now is Anthony Edwards. The favorite right now is uh, it, there are a few. Uh, Halliburton is favorite on some sites. Anthony Edwards, I see his favorite on some other sites. Right. But those are clearly the top, the top two guys. It's a tough part about this question. I'm sure like the, the guys agree. Like, will who do we see ascending? to the place where they have as good a season as what Anthony Edwards might have this year. You know, I think the, who will get the more votes, I guess would be more my consideration because Tyler hero was in 
the sixth man, obviously the sixth man, your front runner, and then got most improved player votes last year. You know, Barry, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think we're forced to pick out of those four. So yeah, I would say, you know, even though it may not be who I think is going to win it, you know, it's yeah, who would finish highest, you know, mm-hmm. in the voting, you know, for that. But uh, but yeah, I'd still I'd still have to say Toppin would surprise me the most. All of these names would surprise me, even Barry, quite frankly, even though he's fifth in or fifth, fourth or fifth in the betting odds. I I would not. I I don't I don't see it because usually there's a numbers jump that comes with the winners of this award too. And like I forget who was saying it before. Dude averaged 20 points last year. So what's it going to average? You know, it would have to be like a massive jump in efficiency too. But I don't know. The same way with Edwards. I guess we could see Edwards. He averaged like 21 a game. I was just looking that up. I don't know that by heart. So yeah, no, he he could jump. Edwards put up points. Like you could see him making his first all star team. But also the other thing with that, there there tends to be a higher standard for for top picks because it's like you're supposed to do that. Like for instance, there's only been one first overall pick to ever win this award. And it was Purvis Ellison back in 1991 or something. Won it. So like top picks don't usually win it. And you have Cade in the running too, which I, you know, kind of doesn't, doesn't bode well for, for his case either. Anyway. Um, all right. Are we done with our, our, this is our done with first round of questions, right? Andrew, you want to ask a question? I did not prepare anything for, for this podcast. That was solely in production did, mode. Did Blandy. So. No, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I can, can I come ask? up with I can come up with one on the fly if you want, but go ahead. What do you got, John? No, I was gonna I was gonna ask a, a related follow-up question. What you'd be most surprised if a Nick was in the running for MVP? Oh, I have a I have a I have a more specific question like yours, actually. Go with yours then. Yeah, because it, it's related to what we were talking about. But but I think it's a little bit more specific than yours is going to be. So um, it. And it, yeah, so it, and it was basically I was going to you know start it by saying how you know there were there were multiple guys just two years ago you know that were in the running for these stuff and actually won it like coach of the year and um, yeah. you know most improved player and 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 D Rose and six man. So so with that in mind, which of the following would, would surprise you the most? IQ as we were just talking about winning sixth man of the year. Julius Randle getting voted onto NBA, the All NBA second team this year. Mitchell Robinson getting in the top three for Defensive Player of the Year, or RJ Barrett winning Most Improved Player, which would surprise you the most. Oh. So that's IQ I- sixth man. That's Randle second team All NBA. Mitchell Robinson in the top three voting for Defensive Player of the Year. Or Barrett winning most improved player. I have a clear top two here. To me, it's it's Randall and Robinson because they're in like quickly winning six man of the year. That's that's not that crazy to think of. I mean, he's not in the top of the odds, but he's you know his his name is listed as in the odds. And and RJ, like I just said, he's in the, he's already in the top five odds. But oh boy, between Randall getting back on All NBA second team and Robinson, I guess. If Robinson like actually played 82 games and led the league in blocks, and which he could do, and like the Knicks had a top five defense, I don't see it. But yeah, it would shock me most if Randall got back on all NBA second team. I thought I would even consider saying Randall if like Randall made an All Star team. I might consider that before Robinson, the top three defensive player of the year. But I'll, I'll go, I'll go Randall for sure at second team All NBA. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I don't see that happening. I mean, I'd be most surprised about Mitchell uh, becoming what third top three defensive player of the year. Randall's done. I mean, I'd be shocked by Randall too, but he's done it, right? So he's been there. So it's not impossible. I would just be shocked if Mitchell becomes this joins like elite. What is Barry? You're on mute. What are you saying? There, there is. I mean, to me, there is a pretty clear cut like between second team All NBA and third team All NBA. Like, there's you know a lot of ta- there's a lot of talented guys. You'd have to you know hop over to get onto that second team. That's why originally I was going to make it all NBA, but I was like, no, let me make this a little bit more challenging. Second all NBA, it's a lot harder to do if you if you look at the competition that he's got. So you think it's it's Randall, right? Um I actually I actually think that it's IQ getting sixth man of the year. <laughs> oh. Do you think Julius Randall is more yeah. likely to make all NBAs? Hold on, wait a second. When he made that two years ago, the Knicks had there was zero competition for shots and and, and usage. 
RJ was a, a glorified 3D player who got his token, you know, a couple of drives per game. And that's it. There was nobody else. Now they got Brunson and Barrett now is coming off, you know, coming off 20 a game and $100 million. They have two other $100 million contract players on this team. I understand that. But I also look at the guys that are going to be on the floor with IQ and other guys are going to be getting their numbers up. I mean, look how Obi finished uh, last season. He's going to be getting the ball a lot in that same squad that IQ is out there with. Derek Rose, if he's healthy, is also going to take all those numbers that you see going to IQ, IQ you forget that Derek, the numbers that Derek Rose puts up when he's healthy playing for this team, he's going to get him too. With that in mind and the fact that I don't see the Knicks, you know, having as good of a season as they had two years ago. And that's part of it too. You know, to get a lot of these awards, you've got to be a competitive team. I don't see that happening uh, for IQ. It's now it's that it's not clear cut to me. Like that would definitely be that Randall thing would be my number two, but I don't, I don't think it's going to happen for IQ again, again, because of the players that he's playing with on the second unit. Does it sway your opinion at all that I, I, I want to double check this, but I'm fairly certain. And Andrew, if he knows off the top of my head, he can back me up. I can be swayed for it. Go ahead. Um, I mean, yeah. I, okay. I just confirmed it. Emmanuel quickly got two votes for six man last year where the Knicks were a dumpster fire. He did. Yes, he was. I, I'll tell you right now. He was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, tied for 10th in the voting. There's a lot of stupid people that votes on this stuff, John. <laughs> Excuse me, not tied for 10. He was 10 by himself in the morning. Yeah, but isn't that just someone related to the Knicks in some way? <laughs> there's no way. You think there's a media member that likes the Knicks? There's, but there, there's always one or two absurd votes that you can't explain that make absolutely no sense. And like, there's no realistic, I, you know. To me, a, a quickly... I actually think quickly winning six man of the year. I think it's more likely than Barrett winning most improved player. If only because we have two years worth of evidence that the only thing that's bankable on the, uh, with this Knicks group front office coach roster, the whole thing is their bench. Their bench has annihilated teams for two straight years. Well, maybe not. That's not really fair because it didn't start until Rose got here, but like after Rose arrived, they started annihilating teams. If they are healthy again, now they've added Hartenstein. I think their bench, if their bench is like clearly the best bench in the league and Emmanuel quickly is clearly the most productive player on the bench and plays the most minutes off the bench and like closes games coming off the bench. I think there's a, Here, here's there's another, a real path. Yeah. Here's, here's another way I, that, to help your argument is two years ago when D Rose was, was uh, nominated for six man of the year. And who were the other two guys? They were both on Utah, weren't they? Yes. It was Clarkson. Right? And so and you had Eagles. two guys on the same team that were both nominated for six man. Now, again, Utah, I think had the best record in the West um, that year, but, uh, but still, yeah. So I guess it is possible for Rose and quickly to have their cake. I needed to Wait, did, did, did Blandy answer this question. Landy said Randall. Yeah, oh yeah, it's definitely Randall. But specifically because of Brunson. I mean, there there's no way. I mean, the assist numbers are gonna be down. Yeah, the but points, did you see Randall's workout video? Down. You didn't see his I, I workout video? I don't, I don't care about his muscles. I don't care about, you know, if if Caden's all psyched for the year. No, there's just there's no way. Kaiden. No, Kaiden, whatever. <laughs> no way. I'm just I'm looking like Julius Randle has averaged three blocks for 36 minutes for his career, 2.6 blocks for 36 minutes last season. I, it's not crazy to think that he could lead the league in blocks if he stays. I, to me, the, the, Rand, the Robinson thing, I don't think he's getting top three, even if he did lead the league in blocks. I don't think he would, because I think there's other guys with more established reputations. But just for argument's sake, if he stayed healthy, which is in and of itself like a you know, an interesting one. I, I think there's a, there's at least a path that I can see. I don't, I don't think it's that great. Um, Andrew, what's your answer? To this? Um, the most, most surprising thing this year would be Randall. Um, well, Mitchell Robinson getting top three deep boy. I just, I think the Knicks strength on defense is like a team defense. Like you don't really go to one player and say, He's having the best defense out of all of them. It's usually like a Tibbs scheme makes them have the best defensive rating after the all-star break. 
Um, so Mitch probably would be one. And as Craig alluded, the amount of games he'd have to play would also surprise me to be the defensive player of the year when you're probably not going to be there the entire year. Um, Barry, to your point about Randall's done it before. Um, so much like Kevin Durant played 25 games that year. Um, there, there's like Jason Tatum didn't make it despite having the numbers, but had like a missed a month with COVID. Uh, there's just that year more not to put in, but like it's not even so much. There's more competition. Like there's more competition. You're saying second team, so he has to be better than he has to be a top four forward in the league, which he was two years ago. I don't see him being a top four anything. Is he a top uh, four forward on this team? It, well, <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. But I say, not, I, you know, mathematically, it's not incorrect. Uh, that being said, uh, for him to be that again, it would be so much would have to go right. And if, if that all of that goes right, then I have no idea how to analyze Julius Randle ever again. Because it's like, so do we just like skip the 2024 season? I think because I think 2025 it was is going to be great. We, we made a joke last week that maybe Randall win most improved player every other year throughout the rest of his he's, career. He has his shit year and then comes back. Yeah, exactly. Not to, but, uh, we'll, uh, so we're going to finish up and uh, move over to the Hard Mix Life feed after this. But I was thinking about the, the most improved player award this season. Like, is is Zion eligible for most improved this season? Like, I quote unquote eligible. Like, is Kawhi? El- like, these guys are not eligible, right? No, so just, no way. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. But I, I mean, say, legally they are, but I mean, you as as a voter, I don't think you could in your right yeah. mind. That's like you know when 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 you're not supposed to vote for a player that played you know less than 50 games in a season for you know, Zion, a lot of these awards. Although some some do. Zion's very high in the odds. Like he's he's among the top five or six. But in the odds. Why? Just because he didn't play last year? I mean, because two years ago, what did he average? 27 and 11 or something like that. So how he was, just, he was an All Star and he was, I believe, the first forward the next forward in the all nba voting he was like the seventh forward so yeah i didn't i didn't really get that one either it's weird he wouldn't be most improved he would just be on the fucking court that's it that's, that's all that he did that was different it's pretty from big and it's pretty big improvement <laughs> that's, <laughs> big, <laughs> that's a good way to end it Zion, play, get on the court uh this was great. Uh, so we're going to wrap up here and we are going to if you're uh if you want to hear the second half of our conversation go over and uh Check out the rest of it on Hard Next Life. Here we go.